Hi, this is my electronic die project. It's about the same size as a standard 16 millimeter die, just a little bit bigger. It has 21 LEDs, all individually controlled, an accelerometer, and a Bluetooth radio. This means that this die, or these dies, can talk to your phone. In fact, here I have a uh, mock up Yahtzee game and I just rolled a three of a kind right here. Let's see if I can do any better. I have, nope, maybe, oh, four of a kind. No, that's a five. Oh, there we go, four of a kind. Pretty cool, no? Hi, I'm Jean. One of my main focus when I was developing these dice was to try and make sure that all the smarts and electronics that I added uh, didn't come at the cost of a degraded experience. I wanted holding the dice to feel like holding traditional dice. I didn't want the user to have to do anything that they didn't want to. So these dice really can be used as a drop-in replacement to any six-sided die, um, and they'll just light up. It will be, you know, a slightly improved experience. It's fun. It'll probably uh, get people talking. But of course, if you're a geek, and you have a phone around, you can augment the experience even more. You could, for instance, keep track of all your throws and see if you really are that unlucky, or you could um, preset the dice, you know, with the type of game that you're playing. Let's say, for instance, you're playing a game of Risk, you could have the dice preset as attacker and defense dice and have them, you know, communicate and resolve battles. If you're playing a game of Arkham Horror, for instance, one of my favorite games, you could preset the dice such that only five and six light up and everything else doesn't. It doesn't make a huge difference, but it just makes that experience a little bit better. Of course, the real sort of future of this, if there is any, is in you know making specific apps um, that work in tandem with a board game to really improve the experience. Um, that's not something I want, really want to dive into too much right now. Instead, I really just want to show you how I built these. So the Outside of the die, the case was 3D printed. I used an online service called Shapeways, and you know, printed a few uh, a few cases at once. I will open it right now. Whoop! There we go. And you can see right here, right the top three LEDs. There's a little bit of foam here on the side that I added afterwards to help keep contact with the battery. If I fold this flap up, you can see the battery, the contact for the battery, and a connector. The connector is used to program the microcontroller inside. Let me uh, take the battery out. I think it'll just swap out. No. Here, let's take the battery out. The batteries are a uh, standard size. This is called 13N, uh, but they're not rechargeable. And in fact, that's a, a big problem and something um, I need to find a solution for. So you can see inside the electronics are wrapped around, they're folded and wrapped around the battery. You can see, you know, there's a big chip over here, the battery contact at the bottom, and more chips all around. I won't try to take this out because it's kind of a pain, but I have another uh, board here and I can show you. This is the inside. So you can see it's a, you know, familiar shape, the, the cross-shaped, uh, you know, cube with an extra flap here for the battery contact. On this side, you can see I have the main microcontroller slash Bluetooth chip. Um, this chip here controls the LEDs. This one's the accelerometer. Uh, the contacts, a little EEPROM for storing uh, non-volatile data, and power regulation stuff. There's a little magnetic switch that will just turn the power completely off. As far as programming, uh, the chip actually supports over-the-air programming. So in the future, I won't even have to open them, but I haven't implemented that yet in the firmware. So for now, I just have to open them when I want to reprogram them. If I look at the other side here, you can see all the LEDs and all the faces. This is 
the number five face, number six, four, two, three, one. This was designed in KiCad or KiCad, depending on how you pronounce it, uh, sort of at the same time as I designed the uh, case, uh, which I did in Fusion 360. The, the thing is, you know, when your tolerances are this small, you sort of have to do your layout of components at the same time as you sort of preview them in 3D space so you can see how everything is going to fit together. And at this scale, a chip that is, you know, a millimeter thick is actually significant. So what's next? Well, these dice are a ton of fun to work on already. Uh, and I'm really excited about all the code that I still have to write for them. I have to write code for the firmware, for instance, so that I can reprogram them over the air. I can make sure that the they go into low power mode when uh, they're not being used and save some battery. Uh, and more importantly, I, I have to write an algorithm so that the die can determine the difference between when it's being thrown and when it's just being held or you know sort of rolled around in the player's hand. This seems like a really interesting problem and I can't wait to actually write that. Um, on the other side, I also have to start writing you know, games that uh, take advantage of this input device and sort of explore this interface between physical and digital games. I think there's like a ton of exciting programming work ahead. And in fact, I'll be sharing it in the next weeks and months. But in parallel to that, I really want to start working on a new version of these boards. Uh, there's a couple reasons for that. The first reason is that I really want to switch over to rechargeable batteries. Unfortunately, I haven't been able to find batteries of the right power density that would also fit inside my die. I could get some custom made, uh, but of course, to do that, I'd have to order several thousands. So that's not something I could just do lightly. The other reason is that I really want to switch over to RGB LEDs. In fact, I just found um, LED chips that are about the same size as these that I'm using here, but that are in fact full RGB. And come on, how cool would it be if the dice uh, could have multiple colors? You can imagine, you know, full color animations, all kinds of cool stuff. You could even do things like um, dice which have been rolling really well just get hotter and so they sort of change color so of course then when you pick your die you know you're gonna pick up the hot dice or the opposite pick up the other ones right because they're due um you, you get the idea right like you could do so much more stuff uh with full rgb uh leds anyway you can tell i'm pretty excited about this uh and i'm hoping that maybe you are excited too um in any case thanks for your time thanks for watching and until next time, I'm Jean, à plus.